all our distinguished guests, visitors um, at the headquarters of the African Academy of Science, my fellows, the Governing Council, our Executive Committee, and all the distinguished guests from all over the world, and then particularly our panel members today. I'm going to share with you a few slides dealing with the program, and then I will hand over to the Executive Director. And I hope you can all see my slides. It is time for Africa. Africa, the time has come. Today's meeting is about the Academy. They are, and we are a non-aligned pan-African, African-led organization, and we are driving sustainable development in the continent through science and technology. Today, we will unpack the strategic plan for the next five years, and we will have a round table discussion of eminent scientists and our African friends. I just quickly want to touch on the African Academy of Science that was established in 1985 by very importantly, 34 founding African scientists. We represent the different regions in the continent and we focus on leveraging resources through science excellence, thought leadership and capacity development and infrastructure development, think tanks and science and technology innovation programs. We are situated in Kenya, supported by the government of Kenya and also the African Union. We also have 20 honorary fellows, persons of eminence, and also associate fellows and affiliates. We are currently focusing on the diaspora. We want to bring them home and link them into the science and the fellowships and the building of a new continental framework. I just want to touch on, on the academies of sciences. Um, and what is important is to recognize Africa and some of the oldest universities in the world. And I'm specifically referring to Timbuktu in Mali, where we already had in the 12th century, more than 25,000 students registered at our university in the continent. We also know that the Royal Society is, is one of the oldest. It's founded in 1660. And very importantly, um, several other academies of sciences in the continent, and I'm specifically referring to Ghana, Morocco, Nigeria, and also uh, the South African Academy of Sciences. The African Academy of Sciences was founded in 1985, and we have a proud history focusing on developing that pipeline. And I just quickly want to touch on the potential within the continent we sit with the youngest population in, in the world, under 30, and this is an incredible pipeline of unique skills and capacity. And how do we develop that through science excellence? Uh, what is very important is, is to focus on increasing the number of scientists in the continent, and then specifically focusing on developing PhDs, postdoctoral sciences, and developing the future Nobel laureates of the world. It's interesting to note that only 29 of the 500 Nobel laureates to date has been awarded to African scientists. This must change. And that is our vision to make a difference in the continent and to tap into this incredible pipeline. It is also important to recognize the agenda 2063, the Africa we want. We want well-educated citizens, a skills revolution, and very important, a united Africa, world-class infrastructure, and also several other critical aspects around agriculture, 
biodiversity, health and well-being, energy security, water security, etc. So today is about the Africa we want and the Academy and our projected objectives, people, partnerships and excellence. We are the voice on the continent. And with that, I'm going to hand over to our executive director, Dr. Petty Boating, which will introduce the strategic plan. And I also just want to introduce the governing council of the Academy. And um, Professor Friday Okonovo will uh, uh, also present uh, his uh, impression. And um, I want to specifically recognize them in the incredible work that they have done. And with that, I want to hand over to our executive director. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Professor Costin. Uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the launch of the uh, African Academy Strategic Plan. Uh, I would like to thank Professor Costin for the introduction. Uh, and I will just go straight into it. Uh, the first one is that uh, we welcome you to this blueprint uh, of progress and innovation. Uh, we put together, uh, you know, the, what Africa wants as uh, clearly indicated by uh, Professor Costin. Since COVID, uh, you know, struck in 2020, the whole world has come to realize the importance of science. The world has realized that the science technology innovation is the main driver for sustainable development and growth. And in 2013, uh, Africa Union was even way ahead of the, uh, uh, the UN uh, agencies. And they developed you know, a, a well-crafted, carefully put together the Africa we want, uh, Agenda 2063. And, you, and even with the Agenda 2063, uh, the African Union also developed a robust, forward-looking uh, strategy for Africa dubbed TISA 2024, and the areas that TISA 2024 harness or wanted to, to see is that we want to have a continent, as Madam President has said, that has high skilled workforce, because we also have the demographic dividend in Africa, having the, you know, the youngest developing population on the continent but they need to be skilled so that we can drive the Africa we want. And the African Union, you know, focused on science, technology and innovation uh, to drive the agenda. So it is within this context and all the developing, you know, dynamics in the world that the new strategy has been developed. So today we welcome you all and we thank you for joining us as we embark on the new uh, chapter of this journey, the launch of our latest strategy, uh, 2023 to 2027. Next. Thank, thank you, Madam President. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I wonder if you could share with us the strategic uh, overview, um, introduction. So while we wait for the... Uh... Yes. Uh, you know... Okay, so let's take you on a journey and I'm not going to belabor the point because the, the uh, Madam President uh, has indicated that. But I think I also want us to put it within context. 
who are we, you know, as uh, AAS, uh, as indicated next. We are uh, an independent, uh, not for profit, non aligned Pan African organization. And we pride that is being Africa led, and we strive to drive sustainable development of the continent through science, technology, innovation. As Madam President has already indicated, uh, we were funded in 1985 by 34 founding African scientists who came together that they should bring like minds together to drive the uh, agenda for Africa. Uh, we also pride in the fact that the African Academy of Sciences is recognized and supported by the African Union. Our headquarters uh, is in Nairobi, uh, you know, through a hosting agreement with the government of Kenya. And we thank the government of Kenya for having hosted AAS for almost 40 years. We also have a different representation, you know, globally in Africa as indicated. What is our mission and vision? It's all interlinked. Uh, and our vision is transform life through science, which is what we had from the previous strategy hasn't changed, uh, but we have a renewed mission. You know, the previous mission was we were leveraging on our resources, but now we want to leverage on science, technology, and innovation for sustainable development of the continent. We also have sharpened our core values, uh, and you know, due to uh, the experience we've had in the past, uh, and we want to ensure that you know our partners, uh, the Secretariat and the GC, all you know. Uh, in our deliberation is within the core values of integrity, diversity, excellence, empathy, and collaboration through fairness. What is our mandate? Uh, we have three tripartite mandates as has been uh, indicated. We have only strengthened it and sharpened it. We want to recognize uh, you know we want to recognize excellence. Uh, through AAS highly prestigious awards and, and, and fellowships. Uh, advisory think tank, uh, we also want to, you know, assert ourselves in Africa as the voice for Africa uh, by providing the think tank advisory function for shaping Africa's science, technology, and innovation strategies and policies. These first two strategies in the last strategic plan, uh, you know, we didn't do very well in these two. So again, uh, we see this as a great potential uh, and have developed, you know, our strategy to ensure that we strengthen these two arms of the strategic plan. Uh, STR policy, we've done so much in that, uh, but we won't belabor the point. Uh, again, uh, who are we? What is our membership? Madam President has already presented it, but I'd like to indicate that we are in 10 disciplines, uh, agriculture, biosciences, uh, we are in culture and social sciences, which we haven't done very well in that. We are in engineering, we haven't done well in that. Uh, we are also in geology, uh, we are in policy, which we haven't done well in that. So those areas that we haven't done well, but there's a lot of potential, this new strategy seeks to, uh, to strengthen this area of the academy. Next. Again, uh, we this, this strategy is also within uh, the, uh, the inauguration of, of, the new, uh, uh, of the new governing council which came uh, into power in July, 2023. Uh, and you can see the faces of the whole of Africa. And for the first time, we pride that in nearly 40 years, this is the first time we've got a woman president of the academy. Uh, we also have various representations from all the other African uh, region. And again, we also pride that this is the first time 
We've also got a Saptanse woman executive director. Next. So what about the new strategy? Uh, just to give you an overview of the new strategy, we have the strategy which has seven sections, but we won't belabor the point. Uh, we'll just go straight, delve straight into uh, how we came into this, about in this next. The new strategic plan, uh, you know, people will ask, why are you launching a 2023 strategic plan now? But it's based on quite a number of issues. The first is that the strategic plan, uh, the inception of the strategic plan started in 2022, mid-2022. Uh, there was a lot of uh, consultation uh, by fellows, uh, our, our strategic partners, and then was presented to the General Assembly in, 20, in December 2022 on the margin of the World Science Forum. Uh, and within that, the fellows indicated some changes or reinforcement of some of the areas. And then, you know, also through, you know, the audit uh, recommendation uh, for the, for, uh, between 2020 to 2023, there were also various recommendations which were also taken into consideration. And that also provided a further, you know, reworking of the strategic plan. Then again, in uh, July 2023, we had a new governing council and the new governing council revised the entire strategic plan to incorporate their own vision as well. So this strategic plan uh, has seen two governing councils and we would like to acknowledge uh, the previous governing council led by Professor Dakora who started the process. And then the last one through different engagements, we had the last one, uh, which we had an online engagement with our fellows in October, 2023. And this would like to thank Professor Ozanema for spearheading this uh, leadership. Thank you, next. So every strategic plan has to have, uh, you know, situation analysis. So we had a situation analysis and the situation analysis was a review of the previous uh, plan to analyze the past achievement and evaluate AAS operational landscape. So the SWOT analysis uh, was done. We chalked a lot of successes in some areas. We had a lot of challenges in some areas and we also had threats in some areas. Uh, and these, some of these threats was the exit of about, you know, 50% of the staff of the academy led by one of the staff to create, you know, a similar organization. And this said, uh, you know, which is also in competition with the, of, the, of AAS and passing off a lot of AAS functions. So again, this is a threat, but Africa, we are resilient. So we have bounced back. We have bounced back uh, through different consultations. We have high level consultation followed by, uh, you know, different, uh, you know, all our stakeholders providing very visionary, you know, input. And the last was that we also identified the need to change, to reposition and rebrand AAS to, you know, for AAS, to be able to implement its three strategy, its three tripartite mission, not just, you know, you know, in uh, uh, in the area of, uh, uh, you know, pushing the agenda of development partners. So the area that we identified, uh, you know, will be uh, implemented to effectively uh, have an impact in Africa. And also there was a need to develop smart monitoring and evaluation and learning uh, for assessing the progress and impact. This was what we didn't have in the last strategy. And it was difficult to assess our effectiveness, our progress and the risk, which could have been curtailed 
uh, you know, earlier before uh, it got too bad. Uh, the areas, uh, what needs to change? Well, policy alignment in Africa, uh, but we also need to have uh, the need for equitable partnership for data governance and ownership. We also need to optimize our internal system and also external system. We also want to assert our role in the area of science influence. So, you know, we developed, you know, together with other stakeholders, looked at what needs to change in the, you know, uh, in the theory of change. That if we want to bluster partner, lasting partnership, then we must expand, expand, expand our community of partners and maintain global leadership. We must also transform the academic community and invest in learning, technology creation, acquisition, and professional growth. We also need uh, to um, be an exemplary in the area of transparency, accountability, and also visionary leadership. And also financial sustainability, we have to make sure that the academy is sustainable. Next. So, uh, I won't be, be, belabor the point, but uh, as indicated, the tripartite hasn't changed, but our core values, you know, have been re-emphasized. Next. So, the new strategy to be able to monitor, you know, our progress for effectiveness and impact, this new strategy is based on result-based management with clear indication of key uh, performance indicators. Next. Uh, while looking at it, we have thematic uh, focus areas, and our thematic focus areas has not changed, but also emphasized. For example, policy and governance. We want to fortify the infrastructure and the backbone of SCI in Africa. In natural science, we want to endorse progression in the diverse realms of natural sciences. For example, climate change. How do we tackle this? How do we make scientists you know, assess all the opportunities in this area? Environment and, and then wealth, you know, health and well-being and social and human sciences, because you cannot do natural sciences in isolation. We want to champion the social sciences for a more informed and resilient community. Then strategic uh, objectives and themes won't be labeled, but to put it all together, you know, in the strategic drivers. Next is, you know, looking at the result, frame, uh, uh, result management framework. We come with our vision, our mission. Then we have three thematic areas. And again, you know, as uh, Madam President had indicated, our people, which are valuable assets, a partnership, which we have to have equitable partnership and diversify our partnerships, uh, and also excellence, which is the core business of any academy. We want to create an enabling environment uh, for learning and sustainable development. We want to build partnership, enhance AS brand and visibility to transform AS and uh, STI in Africa. We also want to support STI reach, research and knowledge sharing in the digital age. And again, all these come with outcomes and outputs, and I won't be laboring. So this is the new change and innovation of this. We also realize that we have several opportunities which we can work together uh, with partners. And some of these opportunities are, uh, you know, open science, working together with UNESCO, uh, so that we can enhance open science. A AS is committed to promoting accessible and transparent scientific research in Africa, aligning it to the UNESCO recommendation on open science so that we can accelerate scientific advancement and benefit the society. The other area which we need to strengthen and we find is a huge opportunity, which we haven't done in the past, is to strengthen our partnership with the UN agencies. For example, uh, WMO, UNESCO, uh, uh, IDEA, UNESCO, but also with other scientific uh, you know, organizations such as the 
International Science Council. And we're pleased to know that uh, President Sir Clarkman is online to join it. Same, are we also pleased to note that uh, the uh, Assistant Director General of Science, represented by uh, Dr. Abu Amani of the Division of Water Sciences, is also here to join uh, the panel. An area which we also need to work on is uh, AAS Young Academy, uh, established mentorship program uh, to groom young scientists and enhance scientific dialogue. Uh, then the diaspora is also another uh, hanging, low hanging fruit. Uh, we want to embark on recruiting, you know, fellows in the diaspora uh, because it's a huge capacity in diaspora uh, which we haven't handled. The other opportunity that we also raise in area of cooperation, science diplomacy. Uh, AS is con committed to utilize science diplomacy for peace building, conflict resolution, and international cooperation. Then the climate financing, that's huge. We were told last two days ago by a colleague from, you know, a Green Climate Fund, that there's huge potential for Africa uh, to harness uh, science funding, but we don't know how to do it. So AAS uh, aims to mobilize uh, climate science for African nations to adapt to climate change and transit to clean, uh, clean energy sources. Uh, we will organize capacity building uh, for uh, countries, uh, scientists, so that we'll be able to assess some of the huge funding in, in climate financing. Digital transformation, uh, we don't want to be left behind. So we're going to lead initiatives in artificial intelligence, data, big data science, cyber security, uh, and AS is endeavor to drive that digitization in Africa. Uh, it will also seek to shape our policies and investment to optimize progress in digital trans uh, in digitization and apply basic science. Uh, so, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. In conclusion, this strategic plan outlines the organization's ambitious vision and actionable steps towards achieving a transformed Africa led by science. The roadmap uh, crystallizes our aspirations, uh, charting a path laced with rigorous evaluation and unwavering pursuit of knowledge. Uh, as we execute this plan as collective vigilance in continuous monitoring and evaluation will prove indispensable. Uh, safeguarding the alignment of action with the esteemed values of the AES. The prospects and opportunities in science for sustainable development, it's huge. However, we need to develop the landscape to anchor science at a multiple and transdisciplinary and agile level at, you know, to make science work for Africa's industrial, environmental, and socioeconomic development. The African Academy of Sciences cannot do this alone. So we invite all of you and all our partners and all our stakeholders to join us in making science work for the Africa we want. Thank you very much for listening. But before, before I go on, uh, I would like to thank uh, the colleagues. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I would like to thank all of you online for joining us. I would like to thank our partners for joining us. I also want to thank the staff, you know, for joining us. And in particular, we we'll also want to thank the governing council, both led by Professor Dakora and the current, uh, you know, uh, governing council for having helped us. We also want to thank, uh, you know, my team. I, I, we couldn't have done this, and I'd like to uh, single out one person, and that is Roland. Uh, he is the MNE specialist, and he has helped to drive this. And Professor Inkem and all of you, and I say thank you, and Professor Zanema, for your, your active participation in the evaluation of this. So thank you very much. Thank you very much um, to our executive director. 
Uh, and with that, um, we, we're a little bit over time, um, but I'm going to ask one of my governing council members, Professor Ke Kenneth Azumena. Uh, he's actually the vice president of the Southern African region to give us uh, a brief closing remarks. And then we're going to move over to our round table discussion. So with that, uh, Kenneth, I would like you to take the floor and just give us a closing remarks. To see if uh, Kenneth can link. We'll just give him a minute or two while we're waiting for Kenneth to link. I notice we have a few people with uh, network connection problems. Um, and yes, we have all learned with load shedding and challenges around networks that uh, um, we need to think out of the box. So um, I think Kenneth may still have some technical problems. Um, and while we're waiting for him, I'm just going to, in the meantime, close this session. Um, and I want to reiterate the words of our executive director by, first of all, thanking um, everyone who contributed to this strategic document. Um, and we would also like to recognize the input of the previous governing council and many fellows who actually contributed during roundtable discussions um, to structure this document. And uh, we are very proud to share it with you, giving us direction for the next five years. Um, it is very important that the African Academy of Science has a united voice that we represent um, the scientists on this uh, continent and that we build a pathway um, to enhance the continent and its scientific capacity, infrastructure, and the next build it towards the next generation on the continent. Um, I'm going to, it looks like uh, Kenneth might have some technical problems. And uh, with that, I'm going to move over to our roundtable discussions. And um, I'm going to introduce uh, Peter Kluckman. He is currently the president of the International Science Council, and I see he's on board. Uh, good afternoon, Peter. And um, we are going to ask you to share with us um, the many opportunities in science, technology, and innovation globally, as uh, as you see, and particularly from the position where you are. And we would like you to share your perspectives on the opportunities for the African Academy of Science, and of course, the International Science Council. Um, how do we accelerate science for sustainable development in Africa? Well, let me make a couple of quick comments here, first about the strategic plan. I think I employed the vision of it, but I think there's some hard questions you're yet to ask. And that is, where does the African Academy of Science fit into this complex ecosystem of Africa? You have a number of national academies. You have a number of national young academies. You have all sorts of scientific organizations. You have a lot of global North countries trying to tell you how to do science and not enough coming from the globals, from your own environment. And so I think if, if the African Academy of Scientists truly succeed, it's then to identify how it actually becomes the core coordinator and leader in this complex ecosystem, which doesn't mean becoming elitist. It means working out a set of partnerships it must take. It's no different to the role I have to take at the International Science Council of working with UNESCO, working with, uh, with all our 250 member academies and scientific organizations, with the UN system. It all takes relationship management, but actually getting to some specifics. It's easy to say st saying high words, but we need to do some practical things. So for example, if you think about the role of an academy, 
One of its roles is to be the peak intellectual body. How can you, as and you already recognize excellence with your fellowships, but can you work to be a core advisory body to the African Union? Because that is effectively what it being a peak intellectual body at a, at a continental level would mean. And secondly, science is changing. And I think you're in a unique position representing the African community of scientists to try and think through how, how science and scientists will have to evolve in a very rapidly changing situation. No different to the work you and I have talked about previously, at least about what the ISC does. How do we promote trust in science in a continent where the use of science can be inhibited by the lack of trust or the lack of willingness to listen to science coming from communities or from politicians? The academy has an important role to play and do that. But equally, the way we do science is going to change. More and more science is not going to be in the traditional linear model. More and more of it's going to be transdisciplinary with end users involved from the, from the starting point. And I think you have a very important role to play in encouraging the emergence of that kind of research, which will lead to solving problems. You need also, like we do at the ISC, to think a lot about how science works with other knowledge systems, with religious systems, with indigenous knowledge, and again, to be a thought leader in how Africa manages the reality that we all live with multiple knowledge systems, but science is unique in can, what it can offer the world and offer societies. I could talk on about lots of other areas. You've mentioned science diplomacy, but science diplomacy can mean different things, whether it's conflict resolution, whether it's addressing the need to use new technologies like AI, or whether it's dealing with uh, building relationships between countries. I think all I'm trying to suggest is the world is changing very, very fast. The ISC has had to change from being just a club of 250 scientific organizations. It's now its focus is under four or five very clear strategic objectives. And I think that they have lessons for the, the African Academy. First of all, it must be inclusive. To have legitimacy, it must be inclusive of all the scientific knowledge domains, natural and, and social. Secondly, it must be strategic because it cannot do everything. Thirdly, it must focus on the big issues. What are the big issues? Science and how it's used by decision makers from local to global. And so we're putting a lot of our effort into the UN system and other bodies like OECD and so forth. Secondly, it must deal with the, ch the existential challenge to science, which is trust, disinformation, perceptions of science, which is why we must address the issues which are misused comments like decolonizing science. You can't decolonize a science, a knowledge system. You can decolonize science systems which have been built in, the, in a colonial model. And that's quite proper. So again, getting this right is very important. Thirdly, we must work to see how science systems must evolve to meet the challenges of tomorrow. And I've mentioned something about that already. Fourthly, we must find those areas where we must work together, either within a continent, across continents, within regions, and not just necessarily with the public sector, but also with the private sector and the policy sector as well. All of these are hard asks on the academy. I mean, it's not easy. I think you have a good skeleton of, an, of a strategic plan. But what is most important is Africa has lots of donor countries, donor agencies, donor foundations determining so much of what's done in Africa. It's time for Africa to stand up for itself 
and set its own directions and insist that research that's done in Africa is led by Africans for what Africa sees to be the problems it needs to solve. If the AIS can do something to get a better and more self-determined shape on science in Africa, you still may need the donor funding, but you need it under different terms in my judgment. Then I think African science will meet the promise of the continent, the most rapidly growing continent. The future of the world depends on Africa thriving. And so what we can do from the ISC to help, we're happy to do so. And I congratulate you on where you've got to to date. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, for your words of wisdom. Um, you know, there's so many very important points. Uh, you also have challenged us as an academy um, to really be a thought leader. And I think it's time now to be united uh, in the continent, and it's very critical. Africa needs to stand up for ourselves. I think um, that's such an important point, but also to leave no one behind, not a single country on the continent, and therefore capacity building and infrastructure building across the continent and to ensure equal access to knowledge and to these networks. And I think that's such an important role we can play. Um, I also like your uh, message in terms of focus on what matters. It is a rapidly changing world and uh, we have to evolve. And I think these are very powerful messages. Um, we most certainly will consider this um, in, in our implementation plan of our strategic plan. Um, and I want to thank you for sharing um, your wisdom and knowledge and for your incredible support of the African Academy of Science. And we are looking forward to many years of fruitful collaboration. We'll be seeing you in a few weeks in Nairobi when we're there. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to ask the next panel member, um, and that's Dr. Abu Amani. And um, he's currently uh, the Director of Water Sciences at UNESCO. And uh, we are also very privileged to have you in our panel discussion today. Um, uh, Dr. Amani, I want to ask you, uh, UNESCO is increasingly working to strengthen practices and prospects for science in the global south. So how do you see the African Academy of Science and UNESCO prioritize the African agenda and the prospects? And um, also, of course, taking into account um, for Africa to stand up and, and set our priorities. So, uh, Dr. Mani, we're looking forward to your message. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Costin. And uh, I'm very delighted really to be part of this discussion uh, as a uh, Already highlighted by my my former colleague Peggy uh, Utibatin, I'm uh, sitting in on behalf of the uh, Assistant Director General for Natural Science Sector, Lida Brito, who would have loved really to participate in this very very important moment, but uh, she is uh, actually in other duties, so she asked me to step in. Uh, indeed. Uh, Africa is very very important for UNESCO, uh, as you know. Uh, Africa is. Uh, uh, one of the two cross-cutting priorities of the organization, the other priority is gender. So uh, for us, uh, Africa is uh, one of, of our main area of focus when we are implementing our variety of programs. And if I look at uh, what we are doing also, what uh, AAS also is doing, I think we have common goal in promoting the critical role of science for development. Uh, we know that there will be no development in Africa if we were not able to harness science. Uh, and in that regard, uh, within UNESCO uh, natural science sector, uh, we have key actions uh, for which we believe that we can work together with AS in supporting African countries to leverage uh, the power of science for their own development. Uh, the first one uh, is on the 
open science, as highlighted also uh, during the presentation of the strategic plan by, by, by Peggy, and also you, uh, uh, Chair, for strengthening, stressing what Peter highlighted and ensuring equal access to knowledge. If you don't have equal access to knowledge, we cannot have an inclusive development. So that is the spirit of the UNESCO recommendation of open science, which I think is a huge opportunity for which we can work together hand in hand in supporting African countries, mainstreaming the open science framework, values and principles within their policies so that everyone can have access to scientific knowledge, to capacity, in order we can use the science for evidence-based decision-making. So this is a first area I believe that we should move uh, aggressively on that. The other area is uh, on the issue related to environmental issues. Uh, particularly from UNESCO side, we are now uh, moving forward towards what you call building climate resilience uh, by leveraging UNESCO sites. As you know, UNESCO has some what you call natural sites, biosphere reserves, geoparks, and we have also natural heritage sites. Those are very, very important living ecosystems where we can uh, work together with communities themselves, identify what are the challenges are facing and find a solution together with them. And I believe that your, your members, which are well-known scientists, could play and should play a key role in uh, addressing the issue of climate change and environmental issue, and also the issue of, of uh, adaptation. The other issue related to climate to climate is water. You know, we are talking in in the world um, saying two billion people do not have access to clean water. The majority are in Africa, unfortunately. It's not. I'm not proud of saying it as director of water resources, but unfortunately, we have hundreds of millions of people in Africa still now who not have access to clean and safe drinking water. And this is an area where we can uh, work together to uh, accompany African countries in filling the gap in terms of capacity, because we need to have well-skilled water professionals which, who are capable of supporting African countries in addressing this very, very important challenge. The challenge is not only to access water, it's also related to extremes, floods, drought, pollution. So all those aspects are critical and we are ready, ready to work with you in order to, to accompany African countries to address uh, the challenges. The other priority is on your role, your capacity of um, outreaching and um, having a voice science for Africa. And this is very important for us as UNESCO to work with you so that we can uh, implement the decade. As we all know, we have the international decade for, on science for sustainable development. We have been now uh, working with all the stakeholders now in developing the, the framework. Uh, and I believe that this is an area where we can work together with you in uh, putting in place uh, all the key elements for the appropriate implementation of, of this decade. As you know, uh, uh, which has uh, five pillars uh, we are putting for uh, in order to, to advance on, on that. We have the issue of literacy. We want to have everyone to be literate on science. Uh, we want also um, 
to have actionable knowledge for sustainable development. Uh, we want also to have collaborative research when it's come to advancing global basic sciences. We want also to have uh, uh, fundamental infrastructure for open science. This is very, very important. And the other issue also is on the new model for multidisciplinary uh, science model. Because as highlighted by Peter, we know that everything almost is interconnected. We need to have an integrated multidisciplinary, inter interdisciplinary towards transdisciplinary approach if you want to support uh, uh, countries in addressing those uh, multi-complex and related challenges. So from UNESCO side, we are really very uh, honored and pleased to, uh, to work with you and to continue strengthening that partnership in building capacity in raising the voice of science uh, because we need more investment because African countries should understand that they should invest in science. And that outreach and political uh, outreach is critical. We can use, leverage uh, UNESCO uh, comparative advantage and also your, uh, your uh, interrelationship with the African government to really uh, emphasize on this critical aspect. Um, building capacity, as I said, with all the university within the university is essential. Uh, um, infrastructure uh, is essential. Actually, as you know, we have a program as a, what we call uh, remote access to lab equipment. This is something also on under which we can we can work on. So those are some ideas. Because I know that we are running out of time, so I will stop here. If there is any other uh, question or comment, I can come in and compliment. Thank you for the opportunity once again. Thank you very much, Dr. Marani. That's it's really inspirational. Um, I think it's so important the critical the role of science in development. Um, um, I also agree with you harnessing science in terms of these specific uh, key actions. Um, as you said, uh, ensuring equal access to knowledge that's critical for us, and we have to do it now particularly with this next young generation. And if we intervene now, we will not lose so many young people along this pipeline. Um, because unfortunately, we are not training enough PhDs and uh, we lose a lot of our postdoctoral and young researchers um, globally. And that's why uh, the diaspora is so important to bring them back or at least to create these networks. Um, so that they can, so that we can recapitalize that knowledge um, and build these networks. I fully agree with you uh, that open science is so important. Um, that sharing of equipment this is so important. This is one of our priority areas. Um, we already have several initiatives, um, the synchrotron, um, uh, several different initiatives that we want to share access to equipment. Um, building that skill, skill and knowledge and technical capacity in the continent um, and being the voice for the continent and, and strengthen collaboration and these multidisciplinary science models. Um, so thank you very much. Also, thank you for your support. Um, we are really looking forward to building uh, the future, the Africa we want. So uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mani. And yes, the, the last panel speaker today, um, once again, I would like to introduce uh, uh, Mrs. Chaba. And she's also from South Africa, proudly. Um, she's actually the chief director from the Multilateral Cooperation and Africa Department of Science and Technology. And um, I would like you specifically to just respond in terms of your perspective of the African Academy of Science strategy and the links of implementation and operation uh, um, of the World Science Forum, very specifically going beyond the World Science Forum. And uh, what, in your opinion, is the three, four top priorities for us, for Africa and for us to position ourselves, um, given the ge changing geopolitics in science uh, and technology? So uh, we're looking forward to your comment. Thank you very much, Professor Kosten. Uh, 
Good afternoon, good uh, morning for those that are connecting from other parts of the world. It's my honor and pleasure to join this panel this uh, today. And I apologize on behalf of my DG, Dr. Phil Mjwaka, who could not join us this uh, during this launch. So to, to respond to your question, Prof, the World Science Forum focused on the theme science for social justice. And one of the things that came out strongly from the Science Forum in 2022 was communicating science in a way that communities, private partners, policymakers can understand. We hosted the first uh, science journalism training program in partnership with UNESCO, with the World Science uh, Journalism Federation, with the SADC Secretariat, and this continues to be an annual event. South Africa is proud to announce that in 2025, we will host the first World Science Forum, sorry, World Science Journalism Conference in Africa, and would like to call on the AAS to join us in this regard. The theme for the conference will be science, journalism, and social justice. We will address issues of equity, of access, of science for humanity, which are all in line with your uh, strategy, the AAS 2023-2027 strategy, where you also uh, focus on people, partnerships, and excellence. So it's important that as we conduct this excellent science that you are able to communicate in a clear, precise manner what this means for the various sectors of society. So that's the one area that we think uh, in partnership with yourselves would like to carry forward, not just for next year, but beyond that. We also, during the forum, started talking about um, supporting a science pipeline, a STEM pipeline. And in your strategy, you talk about the best people to conduct the best science. We believe strongly that that has to start at an early age. And as a result, in partnership again with UNESCO, we started a youth in STEM bootcamp uh, in AI and robotics. And this is important, especially for Africa, that we start empowering ourselves, having a capable manpower in the fields of digital uh, uh, technologies. We would like to again call on partners uh, to support us in this regard to take this mandate forward, especially the AAS. The third area of work, which also speaks to the best people, is addressing cross-cutting multidisciplinary issues. In partnership again with UNESCO, we have launched a program called Mentalities, uh, where we look at the health, the mental health status of men in particular at the university level. And we provide a platform which provides a safe space for young men and boys to talk about the root causes of violence, the mental health issues, issues that are not usually talked about. So once again, I think this area should not be taken for granted uh, going forward. But I also would like to add two points uh, if you'll allow me, Prof, on the role that AAS can play in supporting STISA 2034. We are in the process of uh, crafting the 2034 uh, STI strategy for Africa. And I think here AAS have a critical role to play in advancing an African research agenda, especially towards policy making. Uh, so we would like here for AAS to look at translation of research into innovative products, processes, and policies in how we can support uh, job creation, how we can support the youth population in the continent, stimulate industrialization, look at infrastructure development in the continent, support rural communities, support intra-Africa trade, and AAS has a really privileged role to play in leading an African research agenda, especially focusing on innovation. And then 
AAS also has a critical role to play. As part of your mandate, you see yourself as a science advice platform for the continent, but we don't have a formal structure in the continent that looks at science advice, especially uh, among our ministers who do not necessarily come from a science environment. And therefore we need to strengthen in partnerships with the likes of INSA, of the African Union Commission, establishing a formal platform for science advice. What good is the science that is produced in the continent if it does not translate into policy uh, that can enable economic development for Africa? So those would be my limited points for now with the limited time that I have. Thanks. Apology. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Chaba. This this is a very powerful message. Um, and, uh, you know, the science for social justice, that was such an important critical turning point for us because I, th I think the realization that we need to better communicate science and that we need to pay attention to how we communicate and how we package that knowledge and translate it to, into adoption and implementation and accessible to all, all the countries, all the people, uh, communities, and, and at all different levels. So um, we need to create these formal structures and we need to strengthen these collaborations. And so um, I want to acknowledge also the role that, that uh, DSI has played and, and also um, us up um, in building this network and, and reaching out and being a, a strong supportive partner for the African Academy of Science. Um, and this is really together we can make an impact. Uh, together we can change the system. And uh, we need to share the pipeline. I think that's very important. And we need to make sure that we translate research into innovation and uh, and include the youth and um, develop this international African trade network. So we do see a future together and we want to thank you for your support and um, and your time and for joining our uh, uh, roundtable discussion. And I would like to thank everyone for attending. Yes, apologies, okay. Prof. I know yes. you are running out of time, but if yes. you'll allow me two minutes to speak about yes, our G20 presidency and how we think we can yes. support Africa's development in partnership with the AAS. So yes. as colleagues might know, South Africa will take over the presidency of the G20 uh, end of this year, to, to be uh, exact, from November 2024 up until November 2025, taking over from Brazil, whose priority for this year is uh, really focusing uh, within the research and innovation working group on open innovation. And a lot has been said by the previous speakers on that. But we'd like to take that forward during our presidency as well, and to have the African Open Science Platform recognized as the main open science platform for Africa, but also making sure that issues related to equity, to inequality, to access, to open opportunities for African science is recognized. So our theme for the G25, uh, for the G20 presidency in 2025, will have a strong element on inclusion, on diversity, on combating inequalities in science, tech, and innovation. And we'd like to work with the, G, uh, with the AAS and other partners to make sure that we drive uh, that, um, that message through. So we will call upon what we call knowledge partners to support us in crafting uh, conceptual documents for our presidency. And we will rely on AAS as a partner to do that, not only to support CISA 2034, but really to truly support developing countries' um, development using STI. I will stop here for now, but it's really a call for invitation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much uh, for those uh, very important words and the invitation, and we most certainly um, will provide input. And I really uh, like the focus on inclusion, diversity, and combat inequality, and that will be key to us. Um, and. Uh, for that, I want to close the panel discussion and thank everyone. And we are looking forward to the next few years uh, where we will make a difference and an impact. And um, I'm going to hand over to executive director now for a closing remarks.
But I, I want to just mention that I saw in the chat group, there was a few comments and, and questions and uh, people in the chat group saying they want to be involved. Uh, how do they go about that? So um, we are trying to respond as quickly as we can on the chat group. Um, but we are inviting everyone to, to stand up and make a difference. And also, um, there was also a comment around how do we envisage the strategic plan translating into research impact. Um, and I also want to just mention one very important point. Uh, we do have a focus on gender, um, very specifically think tanks um, and presidential monthly talks. Um, so uh, uh, with that, I'm going to hand over to um, the executive director for the closing remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. Uh, I would also want to take the opportunity uh, to thank uh, Clockman from the uh, International Science Council. I'll also want to thank my colleague, uh, Dr. Abu Amani from UNESCO, uh, and also uh, my good friend, uh, Mampe. Thank you all very much uh, for coming to join us uh, to give a different perspective on how we can implement those strategic plan together. I'd also want to thank all the many, uh, all the many stakeholders. Uh, we also have fellows. Uh, we also have our grantees. Uh, we have other practitioners and well wishers and friends of Africa who have joined us. Uh, at the count of yesterday, we had over 400 who have registered. And I know many of you have joined in. So would like to thank you all very much uh, for joining in. Uh, the journey has just begun. Uh, and we'll look forward for, with you joining us to do that. Uh, I'd also want again to thank uh, the Governing Council for their support. Uh, you know, we've worked together. Uh, in fact, there's, no, there's delineation of function, you know, according to the constitution but there is no delineation of support, you know, as together, you know, work very well uh, with the governing council. And thank you very much for seeing to the finalization of this uh, strategic plan. I'd also want to thank the previous governing council, and I've said it again, Professor uh, Dakora. In his words, he said, Africa uh, was hijacked by donors and we make sure that we are no longer hijacked by donors. And I'd like to thank Peter, uh, and they said Africa must be led by Africa. So we need to develop you know, our own resources to fund the Africa we want. We need to invest in Africa. So we also call on the governments who are connected that we need to at least have the 1% that we pledged for Science for Africa and even more. Uh, as South Africa is doing. Uh, the staff around the table, I would also want to thank all of you uh, for joining in. It has been uh, an integrated, coordinated effort by all. Uh, and I'd like to thank all of you. Uh, again, you know, I mentioned some people, but I think, you know, there are three who I cannot mention. I'd like to also uh, welcome Dockers. Thank you very much, Dorcas, for being a great support. I mean, she looked surprised, but she was behind the scenes. Uh, and I like that she's in the executive office. Thank you very much, Dorcas. Uh, thank you very much, uh, you know, Roland. Uh, we took out the mantle and I think we've made it. And thank you, uh, you know, for, you know, making it happen and for all the stuff. And for our friend from the diaspora, uh, Dr. Inkem, who has joined us. Uh, in this finalization, you know, of the strategy as well. So in a nutshell, I'll say thank you all very much. Uh, we look forward to uh, collaborating with you. Our friends in UNESCO, International Science Council, uh, you know, uh, Department of Science and Innovation, and all our fellows and partners. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much um, to our executive director and um, to everyone attending. And we are looking forward to collaborate. Uh, we notice a lot of uh, feedback in the chat group and we will address these. So with that, uh, let's march forward. Africa is calling.
Thank you very much.